When it comes to prepping your nails, moisture is the enemy. So hand washing is a don't. 60 seconds of having your hands in water means you need to wait 60 minutes before application. If the C-curve on your nail is relaxed, that means water has penetrated the nail plate. So it's best to skip washing your hands for at least an hour before you do your nails. So the first step in prepping my nails is to file and shape them. I love glass nail files because they are so gentle yet so effective. I prefer to do the bulk of the shaping now because that is going to cut back on how much time I spend shaping dip powder. It's so much faster to already have your nails in shape and ready for how you want them during application. I do think it's important to mention that if you choose to skip this step and wait to shape your nails once you already have the product on there, you could end up removing too much dip powder, which will cause chipping on the corners and lifting. So it might be best to just go ahead and shape your natural nails first and then dip. So first up is this little wooden tool, and this is going to be a don't. These are really not that effective. I do not suggest using them. If you're using one now and you're experiencing lifting, it is very likely that it is because of this tool and it not removing enough on your nail plate. Next up is the metal cuticle pusher. As you can see, mine is very dirty. I now use this for art. I actually used this for years, and this is also going to be a don't. It was scratching my nail plate. I did not realize that it was damaging my nail plate, and it really is not the most effective option. So this holy grail product is the glass cuticle pusher, and it is an absolute game changer. When I switched from the metal cuticle pusher over to this glass, my nails were healthier. I didn't experience any lifting you guys are going to see here in just a minute just how effective it is it removes so much more on your nail plate that you can't even see but it does not damage your natural nails if i have to suggest one product to every person that asks me about lifting this is my number one answer every single time look at just how much it is removing and it's so simple i am not using a lot of pressure all i'm doing is small little swirls and just gently pushing back my cuticles this tool here on this end just helps to clean up everything that i have pushed back so here's another example of me pushing back my cuticles with this product. If you are experiencing lifting around your cuticle area, please give glass cuticle pushers a try. I am not pushing very hard. I'm doing very small, gentle swirls on my nail and you will see how amazing it is. It removes so much that you really cannot even see on my nail plate. I promise you this is such a game changer if you're having a problem with lifting and longevity. Here is what it looks like after I've done all of my other nails and be sure to dust all of that off and now let's chat about dehydrators. So inside this pumper bottle is rubbing alcohol and for many people this works, but for me it's a don't. Two of the main ingredients in most dehydrators is rubbing alcohol and acetone. So just rubbing alcohol alone may not be enough for your nail chemistry and for your lifestyle. A lot of times it's just sanitizing the nail and it's not properly removing all of the oil and moisture on your nail bed. If rubbing alcohol does work for you, then that's amazing. But if you need more, let's chat about these two products. So ASP Prep and Clean Dehydrant is something that I grabbed from Sally's and then Sparkle Co is of course on their website. Both of these are phenomenal at removing all of the oil and moisture on my nails. Ever since I switched to these two products, I do not have a lifting issue. So I grab my Sparkling Co pH prep and you're just going to apply a generous amount of this across all of your nails. It's okay to get it on your skin. It is going to get them ready for application. 
So you might be wondering why I did not buff my natural nail before doing my dehydrator. Well, for me, this step is a don't. I am not saying you should not do this, but for me, I choose not to. I do everything I can to protect my natural nails during prep and application, so I no longer buff my natural nails. Now, with that being said, if you find it necessary for you, I highly suggest doing it to just gently buff the shine off of your natural nails. It's okay, it's just a personal preference of mine to not do this. I'm gonna show you how I avoid skipping this step right here. So now with my Manny Boss Dip Powder Liquids, I like to remove as much product off my brush as possible. I start the brush a little bit further away from my cuticle area and guide it back. That prevents flooding of the product on your skin and also hold your skin down on that side so you can get all the way over to that sidewall area. And now we have the base for our application. This method also helps fill in ridges and imperfection on your natural nails. It can make your first layer of dip powder application slower drying. And of course, like I mentioned, prevents lifting. I highly suggest giving this a try. It really is such a game changer so that you don't have to buff your natural nails. Please let me know if you've tried this and if it's worked for you. This is the final step during my prep process. So I just let this dry for a few minutes and then we can start dipping. So I grabbed one in a melon from Manny Boss. It is so gorgeous, perfect for summer, and I'm going to give this a little stir so it's nice and consistent. A common misconception about lifting is that it's only from improper prep. Now, while that might be one of the causes, believe it or not, you can actually experience lifting due to improper application. A major reason why you could be experiencing lifting is due to getting liquid on your skin. So I wanna show you just how much liquid I remove from my brush before application every single time. I have hardly any product on there. So next is going to be keep your finger pointed slightly downward. Let gravity help keep that product off of your skin. So the next dip powder don't is putting your brush right at your cuticle area. If you do that, you will flood your cuticle and get it on your skin. So start your brush right about here and guide the liquid back. That allows you to have control over the liquid placement and just how much. So pulling my skin back now on my sidewalls, that will allow me to get all the way over to those edges without getting it on my skin. So why is this so important with application, with lifting, with longevity? Because if you get this liquid on your skin, when your nails grow out, it will absolutely cause the product to lift away from your skin and now it's no longer attached to just your nail plate. The next lifting hack goes out to the toothpick. So use the toothpick to clean up around your cuticle area. This will remove if you do have any liquid or any product on your skin so that your nails can grow out and not lift. So starting my brush further down and guiding it back towards my cuticle, this is my go-to tried and true method of keeping control over my liquid and where it goes on my nail. That is so huge when it comes to lifting and longevity and getting that flawless application is about how much product you have on your brush and how you control it when it touches your nail. So during your next dip powder application, I would love for you to just stop and look at your hands while you're doing it. Do you have them on a desk laying flat and your fingers are kind of slightly pointed upward? Something so small as that can really make such a difference. If you have your fingernails pointed a little bit up, gravity is going to make that liquid touch your skin so if you can angle your fingers down just a little bit and it will make a huge difference and when in doubt grab a toothpick to clean up any product or mistake
So I wanna show you again just how much product that I am getting off of my brush before I get started. So with this second layer, I like to use this first layer as my guide of where I want my product to go. And of course, pulling my skin down on the side, being cautious not to get any of this on my skin. And this will really make such a huge impact on your longevity of the product and overall application. So let's chat about some other parts during the application process that could be causing a lifting issue. It is so important to make sure you're getting that brush all the way into those corners and wrapping the free edge. That way the dip powder can do what it's meant to, which is to add strength and properly adhere to your nail. So if you are someone who is experiencing lifting or chipping at the tip of your nail, it could be because you are not getting the liquid all the way over to those corner and free edge areas or because you are getting it on your skin. So just be careful, make sure you're pulling your skin back and really taking the time to detail those edges. Please give yourself grace and remember that we are DIY self-taught users, so don't be afraid to go slow. I know it can be so frustrating and you sometimes only have such a small window of time, but it's really important to go slow so that you can keep control over the products, where you're putting it, application, all of it. So I'll be using Manny Boss's clear dip powder today. This is going to protect the color when I file and shape and also give my nails strength. So speaking of strength, that can be a very big reason why your manicures are not lasting, why they're chipping, why they're breaking, why they're lifting. You really do need to make sure that you have enough layers to properly protect your natural nails. My golden rule of thumb when it comes to dip powder layers is three is the magic number. I really do believe that having at least three layers on your nails is the right amount for strength and longevity. You have to remember when you go to file and shape, you will be cutting down the most of the bulk of the nail. So if you're only doing two layers, you're basically down to just one by the time you're done filing and buffing. Now that I'm done clear encapsulating all of my nails, I'm going to activate. So activator is the product that will harden your nails that you can file and shape. It's best to go back through after you've done one layer and do another, just to make sure that it fully penetrates through all of the dip powder and product. After two minutes have passed, then you can go ahead and file and shape. I am all done buffing and shaping my nails, so let's talk about top coat. So if you're using a dip powder top coat, then your next step would be to activate. But I repeat, do not wash your hands. Do not do that. I don't care what the instructions say. Don't wash your hands before you do top coat. Because I'm using a gel top coat, I have my rubbing alcohol here and a lint-free wipe. So this is just gonna remove any residue or anything left over on my nail so that the gel top coat can properly adhere. I'll be using Manny Boss's 2-in-1 gel base and top coat today. So I'm showing you just how much product I remove off of the brush to get started and following those same application steps, I guide the liquid back towards my cuticle area. There can be a lot of issues when it comes to gel top coat and peeling, but this product is phenomenal because it is a two in one. So it really does grab onto a dip powder nail perfectly you don't have to worry about it being too smooth and it makes the application process so fast i make sure that i get my brush all the way to those sidewalls the corners that free edge because that is what is going to make or break for longevity for chipping for peeling for breaking 
all of it. This top coat is what will protect your dip powder manicure so that it can last for weeks. It is equally as important to mention that you cannot get this on your skin because that will cause lifting. If I haven't said that enough during this video, you have to make sure that you're being cautious to not get it on your skin. And if you do, just make sure you wipe it off before curing. If there is one thing that I could stress the most during this video, it is that moisture is the enemy. If you leave moisture on your nail or you have oil in some of the products that you're using to prep your nails, you will have a lifting issue. So once you're done applying your top coat, make sure you cure for 60 seconds and that is it. I hope that you found some of my tips and tricks helpful during today's video. I hope this maybe helps get some more longevity out of your manicures. Please let me know if you try any of these and how it works out for you. I can't wait to cover more topics and the upcoming episodes and I will see you guys in the next video.